All right, I got my iced coffee. Let's hit the road and let's rant. Hey, All Set Chipsters. Welcome back to another segment of All Set Gypsy on the Road. We've got a pretty wet and rainy road ahead of us today. That's okay. Mother Nature needs to water her garden. And it's looking quite beautiful. It is very early June and everything is green and full and in bloom. And the topic I've chosen to carry on about today is neo-pagans, witches, and Wiccans, oh my. You know, to give you a little bit of a background on my back on my background with all of these topics is a lot of experience, years and years of piled on experience. Not only, you know, hands-on experience, but also academic experience. At one point in my life, I actually went and decided to go back to school and specialize in alternative religions and specializing in specifically neo-paganism, Wicca, and witchcraft. And me just being a really devout lover of history my whole entire life, ever since before I think I could read. It's been a really interesting exploration, I'll tell you that. It's brought me into contact with some of the most interesting, most bizarre, (laughs) uh, some even disappointing, and mostly all around uh, questionable people. I've had really good experiences too, don't get me wrong. I I have a lot of friends who are part of the, you know, neo-pagan, Wiccan, witchcraft movement here in the 21st century. And they're all doing their part to contribute to the modern day tapestry of it. There's a lot of uh, speculation and a lot of imagination that goes in the circles of these topics. You know, when you talk on a topic, witchcraft, this goes into every culture, and it goes into every timeline of history. So we're not going to go that far back in time. We're going to keep it pretty close to the, I don't know, 19th, 20th, 21st century topic of witchcraft. And, you know, especially blending that with neo-paganism, and then blending that with Wicca. I don't even know where to begin. I guess I should just grab any spoke of the wheel and just go from there. I don't want this to come across as a rant as I know everything about all of these topics because we never really do. It's a very touchy territory when you're exploring it, whether you're practicing it or just studying it. Because there's a lot of left out variables that, uh, there's a lot of fill in the blank actually. And I think this is what stirs the frustration of the mind here in our day and age, is that a lot of people come from religions or backgrounds where there's certain dogmas and a lot of uh, rules. And when someone first comes across neo-paganism, we'll use neo-paganism as the umbrella for this topic, that there looks like there's no rules and it looks like you're just basically making it up as you go along. And that, that's kind of true, but that was an influence of people trying to leave behind these leading brand religions to feel free. Does it work? Does it not work? Well, it puts you on your own and it makes you really think and explore for yourself. And that's where the problem starts. And that's where people start to become uncomfortable and go, well, this is all made up. So I don't know what, what this is all about or what I'm doing. Sorry, iced coffee break. Because it really then connects you one-on-one with the divine. As you see it, now you've gone from, if you were in one of these strict leading brand religions, to a pantheist outlook where everything is open to you. There's not just one, but what calls to you. And that's where this gets interesting. You know, and then neo-paganism 
of course, means now new paganism. And there's a lot of fantasy and want to really connect this to the ancient past. A lot of it tends to then stream into the roots of Wicca, which people like to put a lot of heavy emphasis on with Gaelic or Celtic connections. That just seemed to be a really popular theme in the 80s and the 90s. For some reason, all of a sudden, everybody thought that magic only originated and existed in the Celtic Isles. Uh, Probably because of the popularity of Mists of Avalon book and movie, it stirred the imagination. And... But the tenets of Wicca are borrowed from everything else in a very loose and fun way. I always say that Wicca is the pagan Catholicism in neo-paganism because it does absorb every pantheon and says every road is right. Now, whether this is right or whether this is wrong is neither here nor there. That can be a whole entire other debate. The thing that gets interesting about Wicca, though, is that it is really, as we understand it and as it's practiced amongst modern practitioners, is only a little bit old, between 50 and 60 years old. This doesn't mean that it has no credit. Actually, I'm really fascinated by the fact that I was born into a period where a kind of new religion came onto the scene that was inspired by the poetry, mythology, and history of man's ancient past. So I don't think that's uncreditable. I think we should give that a lot of credit. You know, then you're going to get down to the micro debates and arguments because, you know, then you've got to give in to the the different witchcraft groups that really gave birth to a lot of the modern Wicca movement, which is the Gardnerians and all these subgroups that is too lengthy to go into detail on this video, unfortunately. Maybe I'll just do another one on those. But, you know, there's there's just a lot of um, groups that like to claim it and say that they're doing it right. But now, doesn't that sound a little familiar? Doesn't that bring us back to our dogmatic leading brand religions? Ah. When I was introduced to Wicca in my late teens, it was introduced to me by friends who lived in the suburbs closer to the country. And when they said Wicca, I thought they were saying they were wicked. I thought it was slang in the suburbs. I didn't know what these people were saying. But then when they started introducing it to me, I understood what it was, and I was familiar with it. Because I'd known it just in a different form. But how it was introduced to me was this very tree-hugging, one-on-one with nature religion. And to a city kid, that was fantastic. Go out into the woods, find a special place, do these simple rituals. I kind of liked that. I, I really got into it. But then as time went on, and especially more now in the 21st century, it seemed that a lot of dogma and a lot of really heavy ceremonial magic has been forced staple to Wicca to make it more credible. I don't know where that's going to go because that, that seems to be almost a full circle too soon of people running away from a leading brand religion with too many rules to be at one with nature, to be at one with the moon and the sun and the the spirits, the gods and the goddesses, who now all of a sudden these really strict rules that must be obeyed and followed. You know, I debate with the Wiccans all the time. They don't like talking about leading brand religions, holy textbooks, and say they alone do not have a book, but if you go to any metaphysical shop, there's at least 500,000 books written on Wicca that everybody runs to. So I guess they don't have just one book, but they, they do certainly have many. Now, I've participated in the Wiccan scene, and I was even initiated through the degrees. So I do know how to run the ritual, and I think the ritual can be really beautiful when in the right setting with the right group. Fortunately, there's always, you know, the human ego, and there's a lot of crazy people who take advantage of this moment to capture an audience. And I've seen bad things, but I've also seen some really beautiful things. Like in the Aquarian Tabernacle Church out towards Seattle, That was an amazing experience. That was just absolutely fantastic. You should look it up and check out their website. And if you're out near that way, maybe call ahead and go visit. It's beautiful what they've done. Now, neo-paganism encompasses a lot of all of this, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're a witch or you're a Wiccan. It just means that you're taking on this neo-pagan point of view. Pantheistic, many gods, many goddesses, lots of different cultures, lots of different paths. 
But we have to remember what paganism philosophy really is. It's coming down to one-on-one -on -one with nature. You know, unfortunately, the pentacle, the pentagram, got a really bad rap in the 80s and the late 70s because of heavy metal groups using it to sell records, and it usually came across in what Hollywood dubbed a satanic light. But when you really uncover it, people, what is it really? It was the signet ring of the Pythagoreans in ancient Greece, which were brilliant mathematicians. And that's how you knew you were part of that college. So the neo-pagans and the Wiccans today have adopted the star with the circle, but also so have, you know, the gothic movement and, you know, a couple of other different groups. They, they've applied their own meaning to it. But that's a symbol. A symbol is not a word. A symbol is a vibration. And that's what's pretty fascinating about that. Now with witchcraft, where do we even begin to categorize this? You can't. Every culture has so many diverse folk remedies and uh, every place, every place on this planet has a folk remedy and a superstition that can be connected to some sort of witchcraft in a sense. Now, does everybody possess magical powers? Sure, I'm not one to say they do or they don't, but I guess it's something that takes practice. And, you know, there's lots of different ways to go with it. But now, the clashes inside these communities is what kind of grinds my gears and irks me sometimes. Because I don't like what I'm seeing too much with discrimination, and I don't like what I'm seeing so much with applying dogma. This is something that needs to be contemplated. And, you know, while studying it academically really gave me a different perspective and view on it because it showed statistics and demographics. And, and that became very fascinating. And Wicca is a very widespreading religion now that it's accepted. And that's, that's good. That's really good. You know, you can see everything from military grave plots with a pentacle on it to, you know, express that this person is you know, Wiccan or neo-pagan. And that's wonderful that we've seen this in the 21st century happen. There are certainly a lot of advocacy groups. There's Covenant of the Goddess, there's the Fellowship of Isis, the Goddess, not the other group. And there's lots of different routes you can go with this. And when exploring this, don't give up so soon. Stay dedicated. Because the beautiful thing at the core of all of this, realistically, is you with the divine. However you choose the goddess or the god, don't get hung up on the artwork. Don't get hung up on the image. But explore. The exploratory process is where the freedom is. And that's what's incredible between witchcraft, neo-paganism, and Wicca. So check it out. Investigate it for yourself. And if you have any questions or want to talk about the topic, please feel free to email me at allsetgypsy at gmail.com or leave some comments below this video. And I would love to discuss this further with everyone. All right, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this ride and meditate myself a little bit and uh, get to this iced coffee that's kind of staring at me in the face. All right, everybody. Ciao.